All right. Okay, so uh, welcome back uh, to our Mastering Shiny uh, book club. We're continuing with chapter four, which is uh, a case study on a data set uh, that uh, Hadley Wickham, uh, uh, you know, uh, give us the, the the insights on the ER emergency uh, emergency room uh, injuries in selected hospitals around the, the United States. And the learning objectives for this chapter is how to you know get deeper into building a shiny app from scratch. And the objective of this shiny app is to build something that is going to help us uh, do some data exploration, you know, expedite the the, the EDA uh, phase on the on the data set. And we're going to learn how to create an app step by step, and you will see the steps that uh, the author uh, suggests that we, we we should take from the simple and start you know, doing the building blocks to get a more complex uh, app. And, and also getting more comfortable using the techniques that we have learned from the previous chapters. Before I begin, let me give you a link to this uh, video in YouTube. Is titled "How Does You Know Shiny uh, Render Things?" Okay, how does Shiny render things? And it's a talk explaining the concept of uh, reactivity. Okay, which is uh, paramount to you know how Shiny does does what what it what 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 it do. Okay, and it's uh is uh, hosted by one of the posit. Uh, uh, employees called Gordon. Um, I think it's Gordon Shadwell. Okay, so check it out. Um, I've been, you know, delving into that to try to understand how does the reactivity work, and it's uh, in it, it. It gives you the the the, the insights, especially you know how to work with graphs and reactivity graphs and runtime. Uh, uh, how they call it runtime uh, something. Okay, I, I forgot it. Anyway, so in the introduction, let's jump to the ch chapter itself. In the introduction, I told you that the data is from the, uh, it's a collection of uh, several types of injuries that the NACE uh, organization, the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System, collected by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, uh, collects and you know uh, uh, gives access to to the public so in this one let me jump back here um the data set consists of okay i already have the uh the data sets downloaded and the packages already downloaded in the global uh, environment okay so we don't waste time on that so the first uh, data set that we're going to be looking at is the injuries uh, data set. And in this one, you have the variables uh, called treatment date, which is the day that the person uh, got, got a treatment in the, in the ER, not the day that the accident occurred. Uh, they, they say that in the book very spe uh, specifically. Then the age of the person injured, the sex, the race, uh, the body part that was injured, what was the diagnosis, uh, uh, location, okay, if it was, uh, you know, at home or in a public place, uh, schools, uh, things like that. Then the product code, okay, and you'll see what the product code is because there's another data set, you know, linked to this. Uh, weight, which is the, let me make clear, be clear here. The, the the weight is is a statistical weight. Okay, it's not the weight of the <laughs> of the injury. It's a statistical weight given, giving the estimated number of people 
who will suffer this injury if this data set was scaled at the in entire population of the US. So it's a way that is going to give us some, you know, uh, weighted uh, number uh, that then we can compare with the population of the US, okay? And lastly, the narrative. And you can see it right here. The narrative, which is a kind of a brief description on how the accident occurred. So that's the injuries uh, data set. The next data set is called, let me see here, okay. Uh, it's called products, let me check, okay. So in this data set, the injuries before going to products, we have 255,064 observations, right, rows, and 10, 10 features. Then in the products, Okay, the product is just consists of two features and it's the product code. And really what it does is that it tells us what was the object or, you know, the, the artifact that was, you know, that was involved in this injury. And you will see that we're going to hunt into the toilet, uh, you know, uh, pr product code. Okay, when we do our, our uh, initial EDA. Then, we also have population, okay, population, and the population is divided by age and by sex, okay? Because then we can then, you know, link it to the injuries by age and by sex, you know, to get some, uh, you know, some trends and statistics, okay? So those are the three data sets that we're going to be dealing with. Let's see if there's something else here that we should be, uh, okay. So in our for exploration, and we, uh, I just give you, a, uh, give you a head, we're going to do look at accidents, injuries related to toilets, which is this code 649, right? So in the selected, we're going to create that object that it filters the injuries by the protocol, all right? And this is the, this will be the data frame, okay? Which is uh, from 255,000, uh, we reduce it to 2,993. Then we're going to count, for example, what were the locations? And we're going to use the weight uh, to you know, uh, give it that uh, kind of a kind of a normalized, uh, 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 you know, a parameter to get a little bit uh, uh, in in tune with the population of the United States. So we're going to do selected count location, count weight, and we're going to sort those locations. So here we will see uh, pretty quick that the first location that has the most counts, almost 100,000, is home. And that's, you know, what we expect, right? Because uh, most of the toilets, <laughs> usually, you know, the injuries happen at home. But then we have other type of injuries, like public proper pro property, unknown school, street, or highway, okay? Maybe some toilet, at the, you know, in the, in the wilderness. And then we also can count the body part. Okay, which part of the body was injured because of, uh, you know, of, of, of uh, because of the toilet. Okay, and this one, of course, you know, the first one goes to the head. Then we have lower trunk, we have face, we have upper trunk, knees, and so forth. Then we're going to count diagnosis, right? You know, from the injury and the body part, then we're going to see, you know, what was the diagnosis. Uh, you know, count and then sort it to the same way as the other parameters. Okay. And we can see here that the first one is other, which is not that uh, very specific or explicit. But then the second one is contortion or abrasion, internal organ injury, fracture, laceration, strain, uh, strain, dislocation, and so forth. Okay. Then we're going to uh, continue our exploration and we're going to select from that subset of selected 
We're going to count the age and the sex, and we're going to also use the weight. So we're going to create, instead of selected, we're going to create the summary. And in the summary here, we see that we now have the counts, okay, uh, between age and sex for each of the ages and each of the, you know, of, of, of the, the subdivided by sex. So if you graph this summary, right, uh, with ggplot, uh, do a trend line, right? And I didn't mention, okay, let me, I jump something that is important. If you do this, if you apply this function to injuries, skim, skimmer, uh, you get kind of an x-ray on what the data types are and also the minimum and maximum uh, values for each of the features. So let me run it because this is important. The dates of the treatments, okay? The minimum is 2017, January 1st, and then the maximum is 2017, December 31st. So this is a year of data for this uh, specific, uh, you know, for this specific uh, data set. So we're going, to, we're going to see in that summary, we're going to see the, you know, the fluctuation on age in the, in, from, for, for the counts uh, by sex, and then the trend through that year. And what we are going to find is this. Okay, let me just put it a little bit bigger. Okay. Uh, let me see if I have, okay. So we can see, for example, that the, the orange uh, line corresponds to the female and the male that the, and the, and the, that greenish, uh, blue, blue greenish light corresponds to, uh, to the male. Okay. And anyone, uh, what, what do you notice in this graph? After, right, right out of the bed. Yeah. After 60, since the most female getting injured. Right. And you know, maybe it's related are less male alive because the life expectancy of female is higher. Okay, that that's that that, that, that could be a theory that could be tested. Okay. Also see this uh you know peak here, right? Which corresponds to the males. So at an early age, apparently they are more uh you know injuries related to, to males than females, but then the figures reverse and definitely the females, you know, reach a peak. Uh, the book uh, has another theory, okay? And is that usually females in their late years, let's say 70, 75, 80, uh, they suffer for a condition called osteoporosis, okay? Uh, it, could be done, it could be due because of the pregnancies, okay? That they lose calcium in, the, in their bones and the bones uh, began, uh, begin to get brittle. So that could also be, you know, another explanation that because of the, you know, weakness of the density of the bones, they are prone to more mishaps in the, you know, in, in the bathroom. Okay. But we can, you know, we can speculate about that. So one of the things that I did, because, you know, this looks fine, right? With the trend, the age, et cetera, you know, and, you know, uh, the, uh, the story about it. But then... I said, okay, okay, is there a is there a statistical difference between female, you know, injury counts and male injury counts, even though we see that the graphs, you know, tend Let me see if it's there. Okay. So this is a box plot of all those, you know, ranges, age, uh, you know, injuries, etc., and then divided between uh, female and male. Okay. Uh, the age is not a, you know, is not a factor there. It's just the, the the sex and the and the injuries. And as we can see, you know, there's a difference. Okay. The median. 
for the female in terms of injuries is 518, and the median for the male is uh, 398. Okay, so that, that's the mid point of that. And of course, you know, there's some uh, possible uh, outliers here. And because, you know, we're doing some data science, right? Uh, we should do some statistics and we uh, I applied a t-test into the into this uh, relationship to see if they're similar or I can reject that no hypothesis similarity to uh, you know conclude that they're not they're not similar. So if we do that with the our statistic package, this is something that I added, you know, it's not in the book <laughs> just in case. So we see, that that difference between those groups, female and male, uh, it has a p-value, right, of almost zero. That means that the probability that, that those means are similar uh, is not is not statistically valid. In other words, we have to reject the null hypothesis and uh, reject in favor of the what is called the alt alternate hypothesis, which is that the means are, are not similar. So they're statistically they're similar. They're dissimilar between the groups in terms of the injuries, uh, total injuries that they have suffered. Okay. Okay. So, and it will be interesting in the app, you know, uh, Hadley doesn't do it, but it will be interesting to see, you know, if we can incorporate, you know, this kind of, uh, of, of analysis. Okay. Well, that's for another, uh, for, 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 a, for, a, uh, uh, you know, a future edition of Master, Master Einstein. Okay, so now we're going to do the same graph, but now we're going to calculate like what is called an injury rate. Uh, for example, when you are studying different uh, you know, crime rates in different cities, let's say that you want to uh, study the crime rate in, let's say, Washington, D.C., and another in Orlando, you know, where, where I live. The problem that you're going to have is that there's a difference in the in the total population between that metropolitan area in Washington, D.C. and Orlando. So what you do is that you create a rate, okay? You know, and if you are studying crime, we're going to create a crime rate. And usually the crime rate is X amount of, you know, uh, uh, misdemeanors, felonies, you know, wh whatever that you're studying. But then you're going to divide it uh, by 100,000. And that's going to level uh, the playing field. And that's what uh, the author is doing here. Instead of counting those injury rates as the total injury rates, he wants them to try to level the playing field and calculate that injury rate. In this case, it's going to be per 10,000 uh, you know, injuries. Okay? So now we're, we're going to have a different graph, of course. Okay? We're going to do the summary again with that you know, transformation divided the, the population by one th uh, 10,000. Okay, here's the here's the, the new numbers. Okay, as you can see, you know, they're they're different. Okay, this is the total count and this is the rate. Uh, divided that divided by 10,000. So in the summary, when you plot it, then we get this type of graph. Okay. And now, how do you compare the other graph? Let me show it here. Uh-huh, yep, right here. This is the original graph, total count. You know, there's no, there, there was no uh, division by 10,000. And then this, uh, this graph, uh, how, how do you compare it? Do you see any difference in it? Do you see any similarities in it? Yeah, the point is, there are few uh, old people. So mm -hmm. even though the number goes down, the proportion is higher. Right. Okay, but still, uh, there was a big difference, right, in that range, this range, right, from 60, let's put 60, 70, 75, 80, 85. There was a big difference. Here, uh, the difference is not that, pronounced. It's, it's only pronounced when it goes really up here. Okay. And also the author uh, tell us that he had to, you know, he had to cut 
uh, until the 80 because he didn't have more data after uh, the age of 80, you know, to uh, get get the the proportion of female and male. And that's why you see this, uh, you know, spike spike here. Okay, but this graph is a little bit more adjusted, right? Between those two groups. Instead of this one, which is the total kana, you can see really a big difference here, okay? And depending on how are, are, you, are, are you approaching this, maybe the rate is going to uh, give you a better information than the total count, all right? Okay, and then the last thing that we want to do is uh, uh, check the narrative. Okay, so we are going to do, we're going to do a sample of 10. As you can see, there's no seed. So every time we run it, it's going to change. And we're going to pull the narrative. Okay, and this is the narratives. For example, um, 80 year old, uh, trying to stand up from toilet and fell back. 80 year old, syncopal episodes, lit up toilet into floor syncope, and so forth. Okay. and. You, you know why uh, the author is telling you is telling you this because he's going to incorporate it eventually he's going to incorporate it into the into the app into the shiny app okay all right so any questions any comments before we start the prototype we're good I think, uh, I think uh, for general purpose maybe mm -hmm. the, the, the way to give up a better explanation. I would say uh, uh -huh. if, uh, it was a, a company, you know, and I want to know to predict like uh -huh. a make a forecast, maybe the, the car would be better but to understand what is normal and maybe to have a general conclusion of what is the proportion. What do you think? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh good good uh you know good good observation and good you know good suggestion. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, because that is, even though it, it is something that we need to take in consideration, sometimes we just see the counts in the data, and we don't think, at mm -hmm. least I don't think sometimes in proportions. But, right, right. So every time we see a count or a value, let's think if we can share it to a proportion and have a different explanation. Because mm -hmm. it, has a, it has a high probability to change our point of view. Right, right. Okay, okay, good, good. So this is our, you know, uh, the the start of our app to try to, you know, automate automate the, the this process that we have seen. You know, the counts of each of some of the some of the features in in injuries, then also the the graph, okay, the the the, the trend line and the counts and all that. So the prototype. This is going to have first, as we have seen, this, one, this is going to have the user interface, right? The the e, uh, UI, and then the server, uh, you know, uh, part. In the UI, uh, the author introduces the concept of fluid page and fluid row. And if you go to R here, uh, let me see where I am. Okay, if you go here. Fluid uh, row, right? Uh, fluid uh, row, there we go. Okay, so in the help, what it says that it's going to create a page with a fluid uh, layout. So it's going to give us kind of a kind of a boilerplate. Okay. Uh, using only the flu fluid page and fluid uh, row, okay? And it's going to automatically, it's going to uh, give us some sections, you know, on that page, give us some some sections on, depending on what is the input and the output that we're going to be generating, all right? So it's kind of a quick, uh, you know, a, a, a quick start to the, to the, to the Shiny app. So in the fluid row, the first thing, that you have to notice, okay, is that, for example, the first thing uh, that it was in the book is that we're going to uh, create this object called product codes, which is uh, using this function, set names, okay? Let's 
get some names here. Okay. Uh, the same name of, of an object, which is a convenience function that sets the names of an object and returns the object. Okay. And we're going to use it to uh, get the product code and the product's uh, title. Okay. Into the product codes. And we're going to code that, you know, in the, in the fluid row. Then we're going to say column, column six, and then we're going to do select input. And the select input is going to be the code and it's going to be the product, okay? And the choices of product codes. So we have code, we have product, and we have the choices of product code. And you will see when you see the shiny app, I think you will understand it uh, much better. Then in the another fluid row, okay? So this is going to have like three sections. Okay, because we have three fluid rows uh, functions. The next session is going to be a table output for the diagnosis, for the body part, and for the location. And then another section for the plot that we were discussing. Okay, the one with the ages and the number of counts, you know, as the ages uh, progresses. So that's basically the page, okay? You know, the, the template that were created. Then in the server, that's where, you know, things get interesting because that's how we are going to populate that. So we're going to use the selected, right? You know, in the function, we're going to do reactive. And that's why, you know, I was checking that video, understand more a little bit about the reactive. And then we're going to say in the reactive, we're going to say injuries, okay? We're going to filter by the product code, which is equal to the input code, right? Right here. Okay, then the output uh, diagnosis is going to be a table and it's going to be selecting the count of the diagnosis by the weight and sorted. The same thing that we did when we were doing the exploration. And it's going to repeat the same process for the body parts and for the location. And we're going to also include our, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, subset for the plot, which is going to be the plot that we use for the population, for, for the injury rate. Okay. We're going to create that uh, subset and then we're going to output this as a, as a plot. Okay. So basically this is our first uh, render, right? Our first render of our shiny app. Let's see how we, how it looks. Okay, let's run this. Okay, and this is what we have. All right. So if we want to verify uh, by, by, uh, by the product, right? Product code toilets, then we will see the diagnosis, you know, the whole count the whole kind of body parts and the location. One of the things that I did, I don't know if I did it here. Okay, let me see if I did. Uh, no, I, I did it in the other iteration is that I uh, I sorted uh, this, uh, this counts because for some reason it was giving me in one of the tables, it was giving me at the other at the bottom. And the other was, uh, you know, in the first uh, ranking. So I had to add uh, that to kind of, you know, kind of fix it. <laughs> okay. But this is basically the output that we were uh, doing manually. Okay. Uh, and we have also the, the chart, the first chart, uh, you know, the, the chart for the, for the, for the injuries. Okay. Let me see if I am, I am correct here. Okay, no, for the for an injury rate. Okay. So this is good, right? But uh, it, can, it, can, it can get better. It can get better. So let's see how we can improve this. So going through this, we're going to then try to polish those tables. And the 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 way that we're going to do it is that we're going to show the top five, right? Uh, counts for each of those tables, diagnosis, body part, and uh, uh, location. 
and then we're going to lump the rest, we're going to lump it together, okay? So uh, here, we're going to add this, okay, for the tables, which is the mutate for the factor, you know, factor lump that is in uh, in forecats uh, package. We're going to group it, and then we're going to, you know, uh, summarize. So now I see why it was, it was giving me that, that output, okay? Because uh, we're going to get the top five and then we're going to get the rest as other, all right? So now I, I see what I, what I was missing here, okay? So I'm going to fix it again <laughs> to get that thing out of here, okay? So here, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this, the injuries, you know, lump into the top five and then the other. And we're going to do also a count, okay? Okay, so we have the injuries, right? We have the injuries. We have our, flu, uh, you know, the, the, the UI, the fluid page, etc. But then we're going to add this function into our, uh, you know, into our Shani app, okay? which is a function that is going to uh, uh, iterate between each of the each of the tables. We're going to use it to create the same lumping for diagnosis for uh, the body parts and for the locations. So we're going to use it to treat those tables the same way. And how are we going to do it with this? Okay, in the render table, we're going to use that function to uh, get, get the DF as selected, and the var, the variable as, as you know, di uh, diagnosis, body part, and so forth. Okay, and with the width with 100. So if we run this, let me put it here. Okay, this is the injuries, right? Okay, this is the injuries. So if we run again, that shiny up with that function, Okay, nothing else has changed. Now we have a more, you know, concise a table. Instead of that long list of counts, now we have the top five and the other. And let me see, okay, yeah, looks good. Uh, we have here in toilets, for example, which is the one that, you know, we were uh, checking out. Uh, we have other, which is, it, it comes from, you know, a, a factor that was there, not the other that we're creating. Then internal organ, fracture, et cetera, and then others. Then in body part head, and this was a confusing part because I said, well, wait a minute, other is at the at the beginning, right? But no, other is the lump of the rest of the, you know, of, of the of the labels, okay? So it's in the, it's, it's really in the right order. Uh, head is the first, lower trunk, face, upper trunk, so forth and location, and our graph uh, stays the same. Okay, comments, questions so far? It's very useful to have other at the end. I was thinking just to get the head of this table. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, it's much better to, to have the other, to have context of how much we are missing. Right, and when I was uh, doing this, it will be interesting to add that parameter, you know, of how many you want to lump, probably out of here, right? Okay, so you have more control in terms of how many parameters um, uh, am I going to see and then the rest to lump. So maybe I want to, you know, instead of N5, I want to see it N10, all right? Yeah. You know, depending on the product. So that's something that it could be added uh, there. But that's for another... <laughs> For another uh, occasion, I didn't have time, you know, to to play with it. All right, so now we have our tables in control, right? Now we're going to give the user the ability to uh, change the plot. So instead of that static plot that that is shown, I want to give the user the the ability to do the plot with the total counts or with the injury rate, all right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we have to change a little bit this fluid page to incorporate something called, uh, let me see here, 
okay, this this basically stays the same. It's just the width that changed a little bit, okay, instead of six, eight. But then we're going to add another column, okay? So there's going to be another column of, of, of choices, right? Uh, below, below the one for uh, the choice of product. And it's going to be this one, okay? And this one, the select input, is going to give us the choices, right? Of rate or count. Okay, something similar to what we're doing here, but with the product codes. Okay. Then we're going to go here to the server, right? Because you know we did a change. We're adding that uh, you know, that uh that choice. Okay. So now we're going to do here something like this: render plot, right? Uh, we're going to do an expression. If input y is equal to count, do the summary for the total count. Else, do the summary for the you know for the in for the for the in, in, injury rates. Okay. So let's run it now with that change. As you can see. What I like is the process that the, the author is trying to teach us in terms of doing gradual increments and do some testing in the in the process to see you know, if our changes are accomplishing what we want and of course that that they're working, okay? That, that they don't, you know, that, that they don't cre create errors or you know mishaps. Okay, so now, now we have something like this. We have the product code, right? Toilets. And then the default, right? The default uh, option for the Y axis, this axis is rate. But then if we do count, then we have our original graph for total counts, okay? And even the, the Y axis label also changes accordingly, okay? So that there will be no, 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 uh, no mistake, okay? And you can see right there, Okay, in this in this if statement, right? Okay. Comments, questions. Okay, so that, now we have, you know, our, our tables. You know, first of five and then other. We have a choice to that the user can make in terms of injury rate, the, the plot for injury rate. Or the platform count. Now we're going to add a button to give us a sample of the narrative. Okay. And the way that we're going to do it is that we're going to add another row, fluid row. We're going to add an action button, right? So it's going to be like a click action button. And the label, the input, the input ID is going to be story, and the label is going to be tell me a story. So it's going to be a button, and in the inside, you're going to have tell me a story. Okay, and this is the column width with the text output, output ID equal narrative. Then in the back end, we're going to use event reactive. Okay, that triggers the action where the button is clicked or the selected data changes. So we're going to add this narrative sample, right? With the event reactive. So in other words, the reactive is that when when you press that, it's going to change that particular, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, output or the feature. It's not going to change anything else. Okay, and that's why I posted that that video because that video explains very well what is what is going inside, uh, shining to the reactive knows which is the objects that are changing. Okay. So we're going to do event ex expression list input uh, a story select from selected, and the event expression the selected uh, subset is going to pull the narrative, and then it's going to give us a, a sample, just one narrative, and the output is going to be narrative, and it's going to be rendered text narrative sample. Okay, so let's run it again with those changes. Why you don't you you don't want to select? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. 
So let's go for our preferred product toilets. Okay, everything is working so far. Uh, we got the rates, we got the counts. Okay, see that it, very interesting. I'm changing the plot, but nothing else changes, right? Did you notice that? You know, the table stays the same. The story, you know, from the first sample stays the same. The only thing that is changing is uh, the graph. Okay. Maybe you that, that's that's, that's, that, that's reactive. Huh? Maybe you should have a problem that? if you change the story also, I think. If I change the product? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, if I change the product, everything's going to change. Mm -hmm. Okay. But... If I do only this change, which pertains to the plot only, it does the change of the plot, but it doesn't do the rest. Other frameworks, uh, they they you know refresh everything. Okay, so this is very nice in terms of efficiency. You know, with the with the with the, with the resources that you're going to be hosting uh, this this app. Okay, then we added the tell me story, right? So if we do this, tell me a story. Boom, you get another sample, but nothing has changed here. Okay, so that this is reactivity in you know in full display. You are just changing what you know the action the action the action that you are uh, you know doing is the one that is triggering the the necessary changes to this uh, uh, you know to to this to this app. It's not changing everything. Okay, let me see. Uh -huh, yep. Okay. So, um, basically, this is it. Okay. Uh, this is what is covering that chapter. The only thing that I wanted to to take notice is that uh, the author Hadley Wickham uh, give us some, you know, some assignments here in the exercises. And maybe you should try it. For example, it says to draw the reactive graph for each of the iterations of the Shiny app, you know, to see, you know, how your graph, your DAG, right, right, direct acyclic graph is evolving, the, the reactive graph. Then, for example, what happens if you flip uh, FCT infrequent and FCT lump in the code that reduces the summary tables? Okay. Uh, the, the lump is the one that you're using. We have to check, you know, uh, this one. And this one, I think I know what it is, but let me check again. Infrequent, I think I know. Okay. Uh, reward the level factor by first appearance, frequency, or numeric order. Okay. Uh, infrequent by the number of observation, which is level largest first. Okay. Yeah, it made the count. It's right. like reorder, but in order you need to give the number. Okay. In this, in this one, you should, like, ah, you have 10 times that factor that will go to the top. You have two times will go to the latest. It's like making mm -hmm. a count and then make a part. Okay. It's okay. Like so, so, so that would be interesting, you know, to see, you know, what is the change instead of using lump, which lump I know because I've used it. I haven't used this one that much in frequent. Okay. Uh, to see, you know, there's a change. It, what I would do is to take the factor in order, in uh -huh. alphabetical order, and then pick the first five. It doesn't matter the frequency. And then you go order the based on the remaining frequency. I think that would be the reason. Okay. Huh. I, because we need to test about that. Right, right. On, but I think it, it does. Okay. And now, uh, Remember what I told you that you know I was thinking about that. Then you know I I, I saw it in the exercise. So I said okay, uh, you know uh, we, we're thinking alike. Add an input control that lets the user decide how many rows to show in the summary tables. Okay, in other words, let the user decide what is the value of n. Okay, and it shouldn't be that complicated. Okay, because already we know how to do that. You know, for example, with the with the rate and the count. Okay, it's just instead of a you know, it's, it's just a, a, an input of, of, of a number. Then uh, provide a way to step 
through every narrative systematically with forward and backward buttons. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, it says, make the list of narrative circulars. The advancing forward from the last narrative takes you to the first. Hmm. Okay. This this one should be interesting on how to, how to deal with it. Okay. So that's basically it. Okay, and let me tell you, Shani is uh, Sh Sh Shani has his tricks. Okay, it's kind of wicked, you know, that the way that it only it only you know changes what it needs to be changed, which is something that is not common in other frameworks. For example, you know, in in the video they will tell you, uh, Streamlit in Python, Dash in Python, they you know they 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 do it the normal way. They refresh everything. They do callback functions, you know, all that, all that thing. Uh, Shiny gives you for free, uh, gives you that ability. Okay, but we have to be aware of it. And yeah, basically, that, that's it. it. That's it for today, my friends. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much uh, for presenting the chat. Thanks, Ricardo. Excellent explanation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let, let, I, I'm going to try to see if I can do a couple of uh, of the exercises, okay, and see how how it's done because that that's how you know you really learn, you know, do, doing things and practicing and stumbling, you know, uh, along the way. Yeah, that's okay. right. Uh, for the I have been using to create the mm -hmm. the the diagrams. I have been uh -huh. using Diagram R. Mm -hmm. Diagram R, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Maybe it would be helpful if you can share the last chapter example here. Let me see. Yeah, this one. Let me share this chart. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe you go, you go and start from because once you create the template, it gets easy to create the the reference using that using that package. Okay. Let me see. Let me copy the link. Oh yeah, this is the readme. This mm -hmm. repo I was creating the exercise. Okay, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. He said, ah, wrap uh here the solution. I just put the, the, the graph here, but you go to the to the uh quarto. Yeah. Mm -hmm, the quarto. Mm -hmm. I, I think you use here you can see this is the function. Mm -hmm. And I I was creating the, the node types. So uh -huh. you already have the node types and also the subgroup. It was the part that was most challenging to me because okay. Uh, I want all the inputs to be in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, no, according, according. So the column, all the yeah. inputs yeah. be in a all row line, yeah. in all the, the graphs. So yeah, the, the, the key to make that possible is the is this subgroup. So I, mm -hmm. I basically repeat these notes right here. So top okay. Here. And left to right. And then mm -hmm. you just need to make that reference. So you can make it this way, or maybe okay, by by one. So you can say x one goes to x, x two goes to o. You can make uh, groups in this way. So yeah, you have the example you you want to show. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, one more thing, um, uh, John. Uh, 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 remind us that the next week we're not going to be meeting because of the time change. Okay. So uh, probably we'll convene in November 5th uh, because I, I've been talking to the other, uh, you know, the other book club that I, I am. And, you know, th there's an announcement in the facilitators. There's an announcement that next week, uh, you know, he's recommending really not, not to, uh, not to meet because of the you know the change here in the US from daylight to standard time uh so uh, uh probably we'll you know skip that uh day and then we'll meet again on uh, November 5th all right
Okay, so if there's no any more comments, I think we can adjourn the meeting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>